Miss Puerto Rico, have you heard of her? I didn't until just recently when she made some just some outlandish and crazy, I mean really crazy, she sent some crazy tweets out. You know about Michael Moore? He went out and said, we're all Muslims, he had a sign going against a lot of the crazy rhetoric that was coming from some of these politicians who are just spewing hate and spreading fear. And somehow this sad poor girl, she got involved in the mix of this, mix of things. So she's from a Puerto Rican descent and she said some really hurtful things against Muslims. So we're gonna go ahead and hopefully Miss Puerto Rico will be watching this too and we'll kind of go ahead and give a res response to the tweets. She has some really nasty hurtful things to say. It hurts, but we're gonna give her some love. But first, we gotta give her the response and guess what, from a Puerto Rican too. We'll be right back. This is the thing, the thing. This is the Dean's, the Dean's show. This is the Dean's show. This is the Dean's show. This is the Dean's show. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Everything is well. How's everything with you? This is Puerto Rico. Have you heard of her? Yes, I have. Okay. I is she have. like famous? Is she big in Puerto Rico? Recently, she's gained fame through her comments, yeah. basically. Yeah, Muslims, uh, we don't watch beauty pageants. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we really respect women to a higher level. That's right? right. Yeah. Uh, but there, there are some things, obviously, that she tweeted, and we're going to give the response. And at the end, we're going to also, you know, what, what's fascinating that sometimes you'll say one word to someone, you'll offend someone, they won't give you the light of day, mm -hmm. they won't invite you in the house ever again, you're just cut off. But even with all the negative things she said, we'll give the response, but still, she'll be welcomed with open arms amongst the Muslims if she changes her ways. Isn't that true? That's for sure. That yeah. is for sure. So should we get into the tweets? Definitely. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get into tweet number one. This is from Miss Puerto Rico, and we got a Puerto Rican who's no stranger to the Dean Show. Michael Moore, you know, he held up the sign, we're Muslims, yeah. and uh, he was trying to go against the hate and spew that many of these... Um, politicians. Before I get into the tweet, what are your thoughts on that? You know, there's a lot of Islamophobic rhetoric, hate rhetoric, and what, what are your thoughts on that? Are you feeling the heat? But you're from New Jersey, neighbor to New York. Yeah, neighbor to New York, New Jersey. For me, it's not too much different than what happened after 9-11. We received the same hate, the same, you know, the same violent messages, and the same, you know, the same disgusting things that, you know, people did and said all over again, right? Um, you know, for me, it basically makes me feel a little sad that you know we're we're in such a time and era in this country of advancement that we're actually moving backwards right going back to racism and all of this type of hate that you know happened a long time ago and we're bringing this back to life we're, we're you know we're, we're trying to set that fire back up again you know in the time and era in which we're living it doesn't make sense man no um usually you know hate breeds hate that's true. and i mean it, no good comes from it. That's but right. these politicians, many, they, they take advantage of this, this the ignorance of people and to push certain agendas, do you see? You know, spreading this false fear because, I mean, anybody like you, yourself, when you looked into Islam, did you feel like you had anything to fear? No, not at all. Not at all. I didn't really know anything about Muslims. I didn't know what they believed in. Um, I didn't know about terrorism, none of these things. All I knew is that, you know, these people were worshiping one God, and I wanted to know why do they worship that one God, what do they truly believe in, how do they believe in it, and give them the benefit of doubt to see what their religion called to. And when I looked into it, I found something extremely beautiful. And hopefully Miss uh, Puerto Rico, she'll also benefit from this, and she'll see the same thing you did, and many Latinos are seeing. Uh, she says, <clears throat> Miss Puerto Rico, to response to Michael Moore, she said, hold a sign that says, we are believers in Christ. Why are, you, why are you defending Muslims that haven't done anything for America or the USA? You know, first, I would have to give her some historical context. If she is a true Puerto Rican, true to the Puerto Rican pride and pride of her culture, pride of where she came from, then I would ask her to go back and read about how Puerto Rico came about being the country it is now after being colonized. We see that our people really weren't a people of Christian faith and Christian belief. The Spaniards came in, right? Queen Elizabeth, when she came in and Columbus landed and these different things happened, she said to the Indians, the only days you would have free is if you come to worship on Sunday. And if you worship on Sunday, 
You won't be treated like a slave trying to go into the mountains to pull out the gold because it was called Puerto Plata, the port of money, right? Because they thought that they were going to go into the mountains, pull out all of this gold. So they began taking those days because it was the only day that they can be free. They didn't have to live and toil and struggle and work hard. And then when they found out that these people that came to invade them were actually human beings because they came with muskets, with guns. So they've never seen a gun before in their life, so they thought they were like gods. They came with famine and diseases. The Indians got sick and were dying while they didn't. So they were thinking, these guys have to be gods. And when one finally stood up against them and killed him, they left him for a couple of days because they wanted to see, is he going to come back to life? And when they found out that he didn't come back to life, then they said, oh, they died just like we do. We're, they're human beings just like we're human beings. And they began to defend themselves and to defend their positions. So I would ask her to go back and read some of this history. And are we really people, are our people really the people of Christ? Or was that something forced upon our people? Uh, when you look at, you know, the contributions Muslims have made, I mean, you look at, you know, uh, from medicine, the first uh, university built by a woman that we're benefiting from that today, you know, pharmacy, many of these great scientists, Ibn Sina, no. you have, uh, for what's the lady uh, who's running for president, uh, Clara Lynn, for, uh, Florine, she had said, mm. she had praised Muslims yes. for now the uh, Arabic numerals, mm. like so when she, this lady mm. starts texting and using mm. her cell phone, iPad, mm. all this stuff is on behalf of, I mean, you can link it back to Muslims' contribution, coffee that you drink, right. all of these things. I mean, the things that, that, that you brought up are, are you know, people don't, they're, they're stuck with terrorism, with, you know, backwardness of some, some uh, Arab lands that have had dictators That's put right. upon them. They're That's right. But when Muslims were in a position that they were able to practice freely, uh, inviting Christians and Jews also to live amongst them in peace, Muslim lands were flourishing. Uh, Andalus is Spain, huh? That's right. That's right. And that's, and that's even bigger. Right, when we look at our culture, my, my generation, my, my, my people, my family, within my grandparents, my great-grandparents, I have Spaniard, I have African, I have Native Indian, right, Taino, I have French, and I have um, European, all mixed in, just two generations above me. And my grandmother even says that her father, who was Spaniard, her mother was the Taino Indian, right, she said, my father used to speak with words at times that we could not understand. Mm -hmm. And she tries to say them, and at times they sound like if they were Arabic words. Hold it right there. We're going to get, we got to go to break. Hold on. Don't lose that place. Man, really excited. We got some more of your tweets to share from Miss Puerto Rico, and we're going to give her some love here from the Muslims. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on the Dean Show, we got Mr. Puerto Rico in the house. <laughs> We're addressing some of these uh, tweets. Continue where you left off. Yeah. So my grandmother, she said that her father, who was a Spaniard, he would speak with words that sometimes she couldn't understand. And she tries to like mimic the words. And for me now, learning Arabic and, and, and learning about Islam, the words seem like they were Arabic words. We know that within our culture, because the Arabs Right? The Muslims had Spain for over 800 years, that the Hispanic language, over two to 3,000 words in the Hispanic language derived from the Arabic language. One of the words that we commonly use as Puerto Ricans is ojalá. Ojalá me, va, me, me voy para allá mañana. Ojalá me pase esto. Ojalá que eso pasa. Right? Ojalá comes from oh Allah. Wow. Oh Allah, almost like if Allah wills, tomorrow this would happen. If Allah wills, Hopefully, I'll achieve this. If Allah wills, hopefully, this will take place. This is a common word that we use, ohala, right? And then you have words like pantalon, right? Pantalon, kamis, kamisa, arroz, arroz, right? To show that our culture is in, in, integrated, in, intertwined with the Muslim culture, right? My African side of the family, when you look at the Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico, there's three customary types of dress. You had the European dress, right? The tight dresses that flared out. Then you had the, local, the, the native dress, and then you had the dress of the Africans. The Puerto Ricans are known for a famous dance of music called La Bomba. And when you go and you look up La Bomba, they used to dress with their heads covered, and they used to wear real baggy dresses all the way down to the bottom of the, to, to their ankles. The men, 
they would wear these things that almost look like kufis almost at times. Some of them, the African ones, would like what would look like almost like a African Islamic garment. And then if it switched over, then you would see men with white garbs, you know, white kind of pants and shirt with an with a old, you know, hat. And we look at this and we say, well, those roots go back to, those African roots go back to Islam. They were dressed like Muslims. Perhaps were slaves who were brought in by the Spaniards who were perhaps Muslim, mm -hmm. right? And they began to affect the land and the people. So we see that, you know, I would, I would advise her, please go back, read the history, see how our people are connected to Islam and how closely our culture and Islam, the teachings of Islam, are almost one and the same. You, yeah, you mentioned those slaves, uh, 30 to 50 percent would, uh, it's a fact that were Muslims who were brought over against their will to help actually make this country. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to the next. We got uh, uh, many tweets. We were just on one, but I just wanted to cover this real quick. We are believers in Christ. So are we too. That's right. Christ. You can't be a Muslim unless you believe in Absolutely. Jesus the Christ. Messiah. That's all it means. In, 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 in Hebrew, Christ Absolutely. means Messiah. And Absolutely. you cannot be a Muslim unless you believe and love Jesus. Is that right? That's for sure. And this is one of the biggest problems with, at times, with ignorance. Wayne Dyer, he's a self-help author. He made a beautiful statement. He said, the greatest form of ignorance is to reject something you know nothing about. Wow. Allahu Akbar, right? And uh, uh, Wally Amos, the cookie mogul, he said, minds function best when they work like a parachute open, right? So if we open our minds and we begin to not reject things that we know nothing about, right, we get to see how things really are, right? And then we see that when we look at the whole issue of Christ, and we look at Islam, Christ is one of the five greatest messengers sent to mankind. We absolutely love Christ. We absolutely love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, you're not a believer, right? His beloved mother, Mary, has been given a whole chapter in the Quran, chapter 19, after, named after her, the chapter of Mary, right? May Allah be pleased with her. So we have to love, we have to love Jesus and change that misconception that Muslims don't believe in Jesus. We absolutely believe in Jesus. We follow him. We believe like in the verse that's in the Bible that he is the way he was the light, meaning his guidance was the way, his guidance was the light that leads you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to God Almighty. Uh, going on to the next one, she said, all, Miss Puerto Rico tweeted, all what Muslims have done is provided oil and terrorized this country and many others. Allahu Akbar. All Muslims have done is provide oil and terrorize countries and many others. You mentioned all of the beautiful additions that Islam brought to the world. It, it, Islam took the world out of darkness into light. Engineering, mathematics, planes, clocks, medicine. If it wasn't for the contributions of the Muslims, we wouldn't have many of the things that we have today. The Muslims have also come to this country and because this statement revolves around ignorance, not knowing what the Muslims contribute, right? Because Muslims are not just Arabs from Muslim countries that have oil. But we've come, come to this country, most of the doctors in this country are Muslims. You go to the hospital, you may be treated by a Muslim doctor, right? Engineers working for NASA, sending spaceships into space, taking care of the satellites, creations by Muslims. In Rockford, where I lived in Rockford, some of the Muslims were the creators of some of the most amazing inventions that are out in space right now. So how can we say that Muslims are not contributing anything to the world? We're making a beautiful contribution and will continue to make a beautiful contribution to the world because we believe that we add to the world's beauty and we don't take away from the world's beauty. And the data doesn't lie. You can see right now FBI reports um, from early 1980 up until 2000. Uh, before 2010, 94% of terrorist attacks had nothing to do with Islam or Muslims. Uh, also, Europol shows 1% of attacks less than Muslims. You've had over close to 200, over 180,000. This is an old statistic. Moving on to 200,000 deaths, Mer Americans killing Americans, that uh, went on since 9/11, and um, most of these, only 40 were done by someone who's connected to Islam being Muslims. The rest 
are people that have nothing to do with Islam or Muslims. That's right. You had 355 plus mass shootings just year to year alone, more than a number of days. And now you have these sad incidents. It's just one is tragic enough. Mm -hmm. Miss Puerto Rico probably doesn't know, like the average layman, that 350 plus were not, they had n nothing linked with Islam or being Muslim. Right. Two of those are linked back to being Muslim. Right. So you see the, the, the numbers. Muslims are the most peaceful. Muslims are the most charitable, the most well-mannered. You'll see Muslims are your neighbors. Get to know them. We got right. We got a Puerto Rican Muslim, and a Muslim is what? One who submits and surrenders to the Creator, not the Creation, loves Jesus too. We'll be right back with, you got a little more time? Definitely. We'll be right back, inshallah, God willing. Peace. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show, and we covered two, uh, before I went to break, put the uh, statistics, putting things into perspective. Mm -hmm. And there was actually uh, Hiroshima on a light switch. Have you heard of it? You know Hiroshima, Nagasaki? Yes, yes, yes. Did you yes. hear Hiroshima on a light switch? Hiroshima with a light switch. The weapon would be mobile, shooting concentrated doses of radiation on unsuspected targets who would die within two weeks. Among the potential target sources say Muslims and President Obama. Hiroshima on a light switch using a small workshop on this property to start developing it. The Crawfords live here with two, with their three children rather. Immediately after word broke out, members of their church started coming here to pray for them. They were unaware of the details that surrounded their arrest and unaware that Crawford was a self-proclaimed member of the Ku Klux Klan. He's also accused of carrying an animosity toward Muslims and uh, targeting them in this attack. Members of the Barkersville Christian Church say they are shocked by this and think it's all a mistake, adding the Crawfords are nice, giving people who aren't the type that would be involved in a terrorist group. This is the dramatic moment federal authorities busted Glendon Scott Crawford, all captured on surveillance tapes in a Scattercoke warehouse. Crawford detailed his plans to undercover FBI agents posing as white supremacists. He meets with them here at a Schenectady yes, hotel, is. and you hear his incriminating conversation with the undercovers, showing them what Crawford called a radiation poisoning chart. It would be weeks before anybody had any inkling that anything was wrong, and they probably dropped dead in their beds. They had tried uh, tried it out initially uh, on the, before the arrest had happened. They turned on the device. They proved that it worked. They didn't turn on the radiation portion of it. Uh, to, that's what they were saying today. But they had at least tested it to make sure that it did work, just not that radiation because they didn't want to harm themselves. The complaint says that Crawford called its capabilities Hiroshima on a light switch, saying radiation poisoning is a beautiful thing. The intended targets, individuals he referred to as medical waste, specifically Muslims and people perceived to be enemies of Israel. Could this device, as specified here, actually carry out the crime they want to do and emit deadly X-ray radiation? The answer was clearly yes. The crime range uh, was 180 months, and the judge gave him almost half of that. And I don't think we could have asked too much more from the judge. So in light of that, uh, you know, I think it was not a terrible day for us. London Crawford sat silently in court as prosecutors laid out new details in an alleged plot to emit dangerously high levels of radiation targeted at Muslims. Eventually, Fight was sentenced to eight years and one month in prison, one of the lowest sentences the judge could impose. I had actually saw that you had posted something on it, and I haven't been able to watch it just we, yet. We had something. This was also a, a Christian, uh, KKK type. Again, People think you're crazy to link this back to, you know, mainstream Christianity. That's the same way people like uh, Miss Puerto Rico, whoever, link back a fringe element doing crazy things, you know, in the name of Islam has nothing right. to do with Islam. Just like these 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 maniacs, deranged people who want who had a weapon of mass destruction. Most people don't hear about the 355 mass shootings, but they hear about m Muslims. When any time anything with Muslims, it's mainstream. That's right. It's wall-to-wall -wall coverage. But when it's someone. Uh, who's non-Muslim, local news, yeah. quickly goes away, you don't hear it, right? <laughs> not terrorism, not, not, nothing yeah. connected, no religion, yeah. not even the race of the people come up. That's crazy. Let's go to her next tweet. She says, uh, Mr. Ms. Puerto Rico, there's no comparison between Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Jews nor Christians have terrorizing agendas in their sacred books. And for us, and hopefully you'll be able to clarify this, inshallah, in terms of maybe giving the people some statistics and some verses and things of that nature because I haven't memorized them all. 
but clearly within the Bible, there are verses actually just recently. Some guys, they put together and they took a ja, ja, ja. Bible and they covered it. Bible gekocht and deze omgetoverd tot een Koran. Hierin hebben we schokkende passages gehighlight die sterk in contrast staan met onze westerse normen en waarden. Eens kijken wat er gebeurt als we de citaten uit de Bijbel voorleggen aan de mensen op straat, maar zich in een volgende stelling laten dat ze uit de Koran komen. Als u mijn verordeningen verwerpt en als uw ziel van mijn bepalingen walgt, u zult dan het vlees van uw eigen zonen eten en het vlees van uw eigen dochters zult u eten. Want ik sta niet toe dat een vrouw onderwijs geeft. Dan moet u haar hand afhakken. Laat uw oog haar niet ontzien. Wanneer een man met een andere man slaapt, zij moeten zeker tot de dood gebracht worden. En die starten open het op in reading the reading the verses and the people were like, oh my god. Want deze prachtige zin uit de Koran kwamen gewoon rustig uit de Bijbel. Serieus? Ja, wat de hel. Zo, dat had ik niet gedacht. Nee? Dat had ik echt niet gedacht, nee. Wat een mooi woord. Dit is echt ziek. Dit is echt ziek. Weet je dat? Ja. Het is heel goed gedaan. Wij hebben vallen gehoord en ik heb zelf op christelijke school gezeten. Mm -hmm. Maar nee, ik had niet verwacht dat dit nee. erin stond. Nee. Dat is in je boek. Oh my god. Ik kan niet dat je je boek en je zegt dat. En dan they ze de cover af en het was een Bijbel. Dat went viral, dat video. Dat went yeah. viral, dat video, yeah. right? And it's just like, you know, these things are also found in the Bible, right? Every culture of people, every religion has some form of violence. But we see, right, there's a good book that was written by Imam Zia, Imam Zia, Z-I-A. And it's called Islam Silencing the Critics. In this book, he gives such a beautiful account of how he brings verses from the Bible of how the Bible, in the Bible, the Jews and the monasteries had to defend themselves. And God gives them the right to defend themselves because if they weren't, didn't have the right to defend themselves, the monasteries, the churches, all of the places of worship would have vanished. So God had gave them the right to defend themselves and to fight and to, you know, hold up to, def you know, to try to hold up the word of God. All of this is in the Bible. It's in the Torah. You find some of it in the Quran, right? And it was an issue of defense. And when we look at Islam, all of those verses that the people tried to use, those are issues of we have the right to defend ourselves. But we had better than the Geneva Convention 1400 years ago, mm. right? The Geneva Convention is new. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago, he said in war, you're not to cut down a tree. You're not to harm a woman. You're not to harm a child. You can only fight the person who's fighting you. And if they cease fighting and they seek out a treaty of peace, then you make peace. Before the Geneva Convention, the Islam was already promoting that. Yeah. The Geneva Convention took its principles from Islam. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> when you put things in perspective, you, you see like if you want to play that game, you open up the Bible. I mean, you open up a can of worms. We, we respect the Bible. That's right. Right. We believe there is the word of God in it, the word of prophets, historians, and anonymous books. We don't know who is writing many of these things. And you have things in there that now we would disagree with, you know what I mean? Uh, you have Jesus who's allegedly saying, for my enemies who now wish that I not reign over them, bring him here and cut him in front of me. That's it. Slaughter. it. Slaughter him. That's it. I mean, Miss Puerto Rico, maybe you've never, never heard that. But now many people haven't. If you read, you know, whole towns are called upon to be massacred, women, children. You don't have any of that in Islam. Again, we don't want to uh, belittle or in, 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 in insult our intention is not anybody, any That's of right. our Christian brothers and sisters out there in humanity. Uh, we just want to clarify and respond to Miss Puerto Rico's text that now if you look at Islam, the Quran, there's nothing in a historical context that goes against any human being's rights, uh, does injustice to anybody, calls right. of killing innocent people. If you read a verse before or after in the Quran, you won't find any of that, will That's you? Right. If, you're, if your Absolutely enemies uh, want to go towards peace, Put the weapon, weapons down and go towards peace. That's right. That's right. Allah is always calling us to be the most just because He says, Verily, He loves those who are just. Allah is the most just and He loves those who are just. So Allah is always teaching us to be just. And it's unfortunate that, you know, the other contribution that Islam has made in our day and era was to make people extremely rich. Hollywood has been making a lot of money with the boogeyman, right? The terrorist movies, all of the movies has what? Muslims, Allah, Muhammad, the cells, the secret cells, the terrorist cells. They make a killing off of using our religion and our way of life, which does not teach that. 
And unfortunately, because people allow the TV to be the educator, mm -hmm. rather than going into history and really reading and learning and not remaining ignorant, because the TV becomes the educator, because Fox News becomes the educator, then we get ignorant statements like this poor woman made. And I don't blame her completely. I just hope that Allah will guide her and that she would at least open up to maybe do some reading. Read the Quran for yourself. That's one of the advice I would give. Read the Quran for yourself and see if you find within it that which you claim is within it. And if you don't, then at least admit to that. Let's cover, we, we're, we got a couple more minutes before I want to get you, at least through a couple more of these. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll put them together where Miss um, Puerto Rico had tweeted that Muslims use our constitution to terrorize the U.S. and plant gas stations. Again, with the gas stations. Another tweet, the Islamic God is not the same God of the Jews, the Christians, and the Jews. Uh, I don't think we have time for more, but just in, in a summary with... When you look at is that the Islamic God is not the God of the Christians and Jews, that was one of the reasons why I became Muslim. The Bible guided me to Islam. The one verse, just because of the shortness of time, was when Jesus peace be upon him, may Allah forever be pleased with him, that he was on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was crying to the same God I cried to. When he prostrated in the, in the, in, in, in the woods, he was prostrating to the same God I was prostrating to. When he said, God, remove this cup from me, he was supplicating to the same God I supplicate to. Jesus has taught me to supplicate, to pray, to follow, to obey, to love, the God, the creator of the heavens and earth, the one who created all of us and the one whom we all will stand in front of, and the one whom we should be obeying, respecting, loving, and revering. This is what Jesus has taught me. So for them to say it's not the same God, it's absolutely the same God. The same God that Jesus prayed to. That's the one we prayed to. And what's wrong with gas stations? We all need gas, right? How are you going to drive your car? <laughs> Again, you know, that's, that's, just, that's just, you know, yeah. ridiculous, you know. Gas stations, like I said, then what about the, the hospitals? Are you going to stop going and getting medicine and yeah. getting treated? You know what I mean? Because what about they, the Muslim, all the physicians. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, if you, you catch cancer, you're not going to go to the, to the, to the cancer yeah. doctor because he's Muslim. Yeah. Don't treat me. You, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's let, let, let's move on to something that we got one more minute. Uh, let, let's, let's, what I, I, Islam says love all mankind. And we even, for the haters, there have been so many people who've been haters. At the end, they felt the warmth of the Muslims. They, they felt the generosity. And now, is there hope now if someone came back in, and even if she didn't accept there's only one God, worship created, not the creation, you know, um, and accepted Islam, as many are doing, many are women also, uh, but she just said, you know, look, I apologize, and she wanted to come to a Muslim convention, whatever, that, go visit a Muslim house. Would Muslims open their doors with love to invite her in and give her this love? I would personally open my doors to her. She can come visit me anytime. Feel free to call me, look me up on Facebook, send me a message. I'll invite her over for some rice and beans some steak with onions, you know, one of our favorite staples, and we could sit down and have a discussion. The man who drew the prophet, he became Muslim, yeah. right? So definitely, there's always that door of forgiveness, that door of mercy, because Islam is a religion of mercy. Islam is a religion of forgiveness, right? Our Prophet ﷺ told us that whenever beauty is put inside of something, it changes it. So definitely, we want to show you the beauty that we have. And she would be able to meet whatever, your family, everybody, everybody, open arms. Is, everybody. Yeah. And not everybody in my family is Muslim. Yeah. And we'll all sit at the table together and have a beautiful discussion. Yeah. Or we can come visit her in Puerto Rico. Yeah. If she's living there, we can come visit her in Puerto Rico. You have family in Puerto Rico? I definitely still have family in Puerto Rico. A lot of my family is still there. And we have a beautiful relationship. They know I'm Muslim. I respect them because they're Christian. And I respect them and I respect their faith. They respect me and they respect my faith and we love each other. And I'm proud to be a Puerto Rican. I'm a Puerto Rican Muslim, right? So I have never changed my culture. I don't eat the pork, I eat the beef now. I don't drink, right? I take the juice instead, but I still hold on to everything else from my culture. Beautiful. Uh, thank you for helping us uh, respond to some of these tweets. God bless you and inshallah we'll see you again. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. And thank you all for tuning in, especially our guest today that hopefully will be watching show Miss Puerto Rico, send out these tweets. No, no problem. We got no hate. We got nothing but love as a Muslim community. If you have any questions, call us 1-800-662-ISLAM. Reach out to the Dean Show. We'll get some uh, Muslim sisters who actually follow the way of Jesus' mother Mary, who wear this modern, this, this beautiful, modest dress. They'll give you some love too, and hopefully you can open up your mind and continue looking to Islam if you have any questions.
Look us up. You have Puerto Rican Muslims, Spanish Muslims all over the world willing to lend a helping hand because that's what the Muslims are about. Spreading peace. We got the greeting of peace. Peace be with you. Much love. We'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, subscribe right now if you haven't already. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.